Democratic presidential hopeful Dean Filch visits Keene State College in Keene, New Hampshire as part of the college's American Democracy Project on Tuesday, December 5th, 2023. I want to talk about that today. Um, you know, Haley covered a lot of my bio, but I'll tell you my story. But when you have most, when you have a place mostly populated with people who have spent their whole careers in public service, and I respect that, you don't have people that have outside experiences from organizational design, institutional design, management. It's so fixable. But again, the power structures prevent us from doing this. Last Congress, I endeavored to join the House leadership team. So I offered myself as a candidate, and my colleagues elected me as one of the 10 leaders of the US, the Democratic House Caucus in the US Congress. And there I sat, trying to market Bidenomics and trying to promote the president's agenda, which I voted for, because I think it's good stuff. It doesn't, uh, it's not everything we need to do, and we gotta do a whole lot more. But what really started troubling me is when I was a member of Congress when Donald Trump was president, uh, all of us Democrats were really upset with our colleagues who would say one thing quietly and privately, and then something totally different publicly. When I say a good 90% of my Republican colleagues found Donald Trump to be dangerous and offensive, I bet the number's even higher than that. Disease just as contagious to the left. And what I found is that as the president's standing with the country eroded, his approval numbers started dropping, the polls started to show, as, as recently as six months ago, that he was likely to lose the next election to Donald Trump. Uh, I became very concerned and started having those same conversations with my colleagues that the Republicans were having amongst themselves about the country is facing a crisis of affordability. And I have to tell you, I've tried my best in my lifetime to spend time with people who see things differently, who are living differently, we're experiencing traumas and challenges that are probably very foreign to people who grow up in homes of privilege and have created success. But I tell you, I've been in Washington now five and a half years, and the encapsulation of Washington, D.C., especially in the White House, the inability to, to connect with people who are struggling because you're spending 10,000 hours per week, per week raising money, you're raising it from people who have a lot of it. The Democratic Party, the party I love, the party that I've been supporting and enabling my whole life, the party that my grandmother, Dear Abby, sat at the dinner table in 1980 and pointed to me and said, what are you, a Democrat or Republican? I said, I did not know. She said, you're a Democrat. <laughs> that was her first bit of advice. But I say this sincerely, my friends, the destruction of democracy is not unique to the right. It is happening in front of our eyes right here in your state and it is happening in Florida right now. Before, there will probably be a 25% cut roughly in benefits. Now, it's interesting because a lot of my conservative friends in Congress actually don't want to do anything right now because they know there will be a cut in 2033, so let's just ignore it. And my Democratic colleagues, when I sign up to work with Mitt Romney to actually ensure that the trust funds supporting it are solvent, I got heat from my Democratic friends saying that I'm trying to undermine Social Security. And I said, my friend, you gotta understand, it's going to be undermined if we do nothing. And that's the truth. You pointed out the truth, so, so thank you. How do we fix it? Really simply. Right now, the cap, I think, is about $160,000 a year, the contribution cap, which means it is a very regressive tax. If you're earning $160,000 a year, you are paying a lot more of your income into Social Security than someone earning $250,000 a year. So my proposition is very simple. The cap should be raised to $250,000 a year. It'll make Social Security totally solvent for until at least the late 2040s. And then here's my other proposition. I like to compliment 